Dr. Dedan Christiana is the Director General of New and Renewable Energy and Energy Conservation, Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, Indonesia. He completed his doctoral degree from Kyoto University, Japan, majoring in Environmental and Energy Science. So please welcome Dr. Dedan Christiana. Time and screen are yours. Thank you for a good morning. Thank you, Mbak Adisti, for the introduction. So, very good morning to all of you. Selamat pagi. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you for the invitation uh, from NEDO. I, I really appreciate for this kind of initiative. So, to discuss something that quite new for, for us. And uh, this is a very good uh, opportunity also to learn, to see how's the development on this kind of new energy, this kind of the te uh, new technology implementation. And, and later on, try to see how to implement here in the country. I would like to share the slide. Uh, try to uh, share uh, what is currently uh, being in the uh, implementation here in the country, in particular for hydrogen, but uh, I would like to start with the renewable energy policies and implementation. And then at the end, I would like to touch into the issue of hydrogen development in the country. I see here, uh, we have also Prof. Enia, who is the expert on the hydrogen technology, I think on technical issue, she will she will uh, talk more than, than, than myself. I would like to start with providing the Indonesian commitment for the uh, greenhouse gas emission. So I start with the, with the issue, with the common issues for all of us, for Japan, for Indonesia, I think also for other country, for Malaysia. So all countries are now uh, having the commitment for the greenhouse gas reductions. And for Indonesia, the commitment is to reduce by 29% of uh, greenhouse gas emission uh, in 2030. And now, actually, we are discussing how to uh, how to uh, improve, how to have more ambition for the greenhouse gas emission, including setting the target of net zero emission. I know I heard that Japan has put the uh, the target in 2050. And for us here, we are still in the finding the, the best way how to reach the target for the uh, uh, net zero emission. So we don't set the target in, 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 in what year. Currently, uh, we are still in the uh, optimizing all any possibilities to, to have the target. So in total here for energy, the commitment for from energy sector is 314 million ton of CO2 in 2030, in which half of that will be from the renewable energy, the other half will be coming from the energy implement energy efficiency implementation and also the use of green energy technology. So here the our uh, achievements so far. Uh, the, the chronology is from uh, year 2017 up to now, in, uh, last year in 2020. So this is the comparison between target and uh, the achievement, the realization. So, so far, I can say that we are still on the target to reach the commitment in 2030. So even last year, we are beyond of, uh, higher than, than the uh, target. So last year we we could reach 64 million ton compared with target of 58. So, so this is the 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 tail of the data from energy efficiency, renewable energy. So, so I think we are still on the target. It's not only for from the energy sector, but also from the the other from the agriculture as well as also from the forest. Next, how then the the planning to reach the greenhouse gas emission from this year, 2020, 2021, uh, and for the next 10 years. So we will add more renewable energy into the grid. We will use more biodiesel for uh, 
uh, renewable energy as the substitution from for the diesel fuel and also for, for others. And we try also to start with the program of electric vehicles as well as also the transition to low carbon fuels and try also to use clean generation technologies, including the hydrogen, I think, for this part, whether this is uh, by fuel cell for, for cars or by fuel cell for, for electricity. One initiative here to, to accelerate the implementation of renewable energy is, uh, we call here is co-firing. We work also with uh, uh, Japan Japanese companies providing us the input how to to do the modification for, for the engine, for the technology in coke firing. And we have also the cooperation with uh, another company in Japan also to start the study of coke firing by the uh, ammonia. Yeah. So this is another example as the hydrogen carrier coming from, uh, whether this is coming from uh, natural gas or from the coal gasification. So we will have the 23 percent. Uh, the actually this is a target for renewable energy in 2025, and uh, 28 percent in 2030. It will be based on renewable energy, of course, also the uh, uh, electric vehicle to reach the target of the uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction in 2030. So again, for, for Indonesia, the initiative of putting hydrogen as uh, the other resources for new and renewable energy are very uh, significant and very strategic. Next. How then we can reach the target for uh, greenhouse gas emission and going to the net zero emission? So the first, we put more green energy including the uh, hydrogen probably on, on this part. So renewable energy, electric vehicle, battery, hydrogen. I think three of them will be our game changer. It's not only for Indonesia, but I think for all, all countries having battery and hydrogen, I think that will change a lot of our energy ecosystem, yeah? including the uh, greenhouse gas emission. We'll add more uh, smart energy and smart energy, uh, smart energy and smart grid, and also the low hanging fruit for energy efficiency, the energy conservation to reduce the need of energy and also to increase the productivity. On top of that, we will still need the clean technology. Clean core technology, for example, are the one that actually uh, uh, is being also in in the uh, development is the CCUS, the Carbon Capture Utilization and Storage. It will capture the CO2, so we'll have the uh, zero emission, but I think we still need the zero emission technology, the net sink. This will be coming from the agriculture, and zero emission will also from forestry sector. So by combining this, we can achieve the energy independency with the sustainable de development and perhaps uh, sometime with the uh, net zero emission. Next. We are now uh, trying to optimize all any uh, resources in the country to, to create national energy resilience and independence and try to reduce the import in particular crude and gasoline, which is currently the, the import are being increased. And most of LPG used in the country are still imported. So we are trying to use, for example, to develop the methyl ether uh, from coal through the gasification and uh, for LPG substitution. And of course, we will increase the use of renewable energy with the priority on uh, solar power plan and also to optimize by fuel productions. Next. This is our uh, roadmap the, up to 2035. So we'll use the substitution. We don't need to put the new technology rather than to utilize the existing technology, for example, 
the increasing the use of B30. Currently, we, we do putting the biodiesel 30 percent, blending with the diesel fuel, and now uh, we are in the process of the testing to increase the blending ratio. We will uh, expand the co-firing program. Currently, we have six uh, coal power fire plant being used with the uh, blending of biomass with the coal. And then also converting diesel fuel, diesel, diesel fuel through renewable energy implementation. We have, for example, around 5,000 of the diesel power spread it out of the country and use in the remote areas. So we are trying also to, to, to substitute the use of the diesel fuel. And then, of course, we need to increase the renewable energy capacity. I think uh, I'm also uh, promoting the use of non-electric renewable energy application and non-biofuel. We can do, for example, for agriculture products, for drying, for other processes, we can use the enthalpy from the uh, geothermal, we can use the brine from geothermal, for, for that kind of the application. Yeah. In the strategy, we put also the nuclear. So we are uh, in the process of the uh, finalizing the all and uh, requirement to start the nuclear program. But of course, uh, there is no decision yet whether we go or no go for the nuclear implementation. Next. So what then beyond 2035? Of course, it has to be uh, prepared from now to reach the target, to reach the clean energy development, to reach to approach for the net zero emission. We put nuclear as one of the option, and the other option on hydrogen. As I mentioned, I think hydrogen and battery, this will be the game changer who will be the first uh, champion for this, I think that will, will be also uh, determining uh, the future for the clean energy development. So again, hydrogen will be the strategic and important uh, aspect for the clean energy development. Next. So, so far, I think uh, uh, the implementation of the fuel cell, whether this is based on uh, uh, pure hydrogen or this is in the mixed fuel, for example, from the uh, methanol mixed with water or from the natural gas, the use of the development technology, I think, led by BPPT, which is Prop Enya will be uh, sharing on the progress, on the update. Actually, we have already in the, I may call this is in commercial implementation, yeah. So far, we have around 800 units already uh, implemented for the uh, telecommunication application, yeah. In particular, for the uh, uh, tower, yeah, tower of PLN. So they are using the uh, fuel cell technology because of some reason, yeah. because there are difficulty in the managing the diesel fuel and also the high quality of electricity, electricity coming from this kind of technology. So, so far, I think in terms of the technology, they are already uh, development in, in, in the country. Yeah. I just discussed this morning with one of the provider of the fuel cell technology. So uh, I see a lot of uh, opportunities as well as also the challenges, uh, how to bring this uh, hydrogen and uh, use as the very clean technology, uh, very clean energy technology. Next. One example, uh, this is the initiative coming from uh, Pertamina. They have the project uh, to use electricity actually coming from the geothermal, and then to do the, elect, uh, to produce hydrogen through the electrolyzer unit 
and then use this hydrogen for another purposes in the Pertamina business yeah, yeah because they, they use a lot of hydrogen in, in the refinery so uh, I think that this is will be uh, another interesting initiative how to develop the uh, green hydrogen from green energy and also uh, at the end we will have the very clean uh, zero net uh, zero emission technology for the energy so this is another example from pertamina we have also another initiative uh, next how to develop uh, hydrogen of course uh, coming from renewable energy from uh, solar energy this is also utilizing water or uh, for the production of hydrogen through the through electrolyzing uh, process so this this will be uh, our pilot project probably we are still discussing with the provider of technology and try to see how the best uh, uh, support from the government so we are combining the renewable and the uh, hydrogen a process as well as also the fuel cell uh, for electricity in the area uh, here is the ten, uh, tentative area is in Sumba Sumba is located uh, in Nusa Tenggara Timur is Nusa Tenggara so around uh, almost 1500 kilometer from Jakarta this is the area that the solar irradiation is the best in the country yeah. so 1.4 times compared with the java island this is sumba so we are discussing with the provider technology in particular i think this is from uh, europe on this next yeah this is from uh, geothermal i think i mentioned already next so that's all actually uh, from my side uh, as the sharing what actually has been done and uh, how the Ministry of Energy see the, the future of the use of the hydrogen energy. So again, thank you for uh, inviting me here and looking forward for further discussion. Thank you. Nato.